Okay, for this video I'm doing a mod of the Ishin E58 battery. I really like this quad, but I was not interested in using the proprietary batteries only for it. It's a really neat system as far as the battery itself, but it has that proprietary connection. And something that applies to all proprietary batteries is no matter how cool they are and, and efficiently they, they kind of fit into the frame of these quads, all proprietary batteries can be made into basically a generic battery. All of them just have a positive and a negative connection and it's easy to let the connector on it fool you but it's actually very easy to make a proprietary battery compatible for just about any battery you want. So it's a 500 milliamp hour battery and because I have the Blade Nano QX2 I actually have a bunch of these. I will say that the E-Flight 500 milliamp hour battery is too big for this. The Venom RC 500 milliamp hour battery fits just fine so I can vouch for it. It's not the cheapest option however I just want to point that out right now. So this is the modification I did to it. And it's very simple wiring. It does require soldering, but the actual mechanics of, of making it work, it's very easy to do. It's very simple. So first off, I'm gonna take it apart. And while I'm taking it apart, I'm gonna show you um, the batteries that I have. So these are Venom RC 500 milliamp hour batteries. Not cheap, however, you can tell by looking. So, Anyway, but I already had them and I bought them at a cheaper price. So then I also bought a bunch of these female JST 2.0 connectors. And I actually only needed one to make this whole project work, but I wound up just buying a bunch of them just in case I need them again. Now I can't vouch for these batteries, but they are a lot cheaper and, and if they fit, they use a more common JST connector. So you may want to try using these batteries, but I, like I said, I don't know if they would actually fit into the case of the uh, proprietary battery cartridge, but it might be worth a try. And if not, you could probably figure out a way to make it work. So anyway, I finally got the last screw out. There's four screws holding it together, and then once you get the last screw out, all you can have to do is just basically pull it apart. That's all it is, is, it's just a positive and negative connection. And the battery in stock form just sits in there like that and then you can just kind of pull it out a little ways and then just snip those wires. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's, um, it's a clever ploy to use the proprietary battery, but ultimately all of them are just a positive and negative connection. And then all I did was solder the uh, JST 2.0 connector to it positive positive negative to negative and then to make sure that I could get the batteries to fit I wanted to actually slide them in and out so there's some little pieces of plastic there's four pieces of plastic in there they're designed to hold the battery in to keep it in there tight to where it doesn't fall out but if you have a sharp exacto knife it'll cut real easy and then what I did was I I cut open the back so let me compare it to the stock okay so there's the stock and then all I did was just cut it open Cut a hole open and it's very soft plastic and like I said if you have a sharp exacto knife it'll cut really easy just no problem at all and then I also had to shave down the sides of the Venom RC's to get them to fit and here again I just used an exacto knife it was really easy to do um, and then I shaved a little bit off the top edge of it to make sure it would fit and then it's just a matter of screwing the, the top part of the cartridge back down Okay, and then all you got to do is just kind of push the battery in. You might have to nudge a little bit to get that black end of it to fit in. And that's it. 
All you got to do is connect it. You're done. And actually, you don't even have to take it the whole cartridge in and out of the um, E58. You can just disconnect the battery and then pull it out. Swap a fresh one in, reconnect it, turn it back on, and you're good to go. And I really made a point to not do a bunch of operating on this quad. I like, I really, it's such a good looking quad. I didn't want to do a lot of cutting. It would have been a lot easier, really, if I just got my X Acto knife out or a drill or something and just really tore into it. But this quad is so nicely built, I wanted to maintain its look. So because I had a few of those um, JST 2.0, female connectors laying around. I took one of my Sky Viper chargers. It's made for the, um, like a 650 milliamp hour battery. Milliamp hours, if it's doing it right, it shouldn't matter. It's just gonna charge to 4.2 volts, which is what you want for a one cell battery. And then all I did was I just took that, that female connector, matched positive, positive, negative, negative, soldered it up, heat shrinked it. And now I've got a generic, USB charger for my 500 milliamp hour battery. Simple as that. And then, of course, if you just so happen to be a little deeper into this hobby, you can always get a hobby grade charger and you can charge all six of these batteries all at one time. These guys right here. It took me a while to kind of figure it out. Like the, the interface on it isn't very good, but once you figure it out, man, it's great. You can just charge six batteries at a time, just kind of walk away for a while. And and it, it's probably about an hour and a half charge for six batteries. But that's all I got. Thanks for watching.